A lot of people say to me, how do you keep going at your age? They must think I'm a bit over the uh, normal age for racing and a record attempt or speed trials, whatever you happen to be in. And, um, well, I said, I always tell them I don't smoke. <laughs> Bert Monroe is my brother by adoption. I was the youngest of the second generation family uh, brought in by the Munros. And, uh, He's always, of course, been crazy on motorbikes, and I well remember our mother saying that she really felt that Bert wanted to die with his boots on. There were times when he would be chasing a speed record where neighbours would report that they saw him flying in the air for quite a number of dozens of feet, and they were amazed that he could in actual fact survive. You can live more in five minutes in a motorcycle in some of these events I've been in on some people do in a lifetime. You live more than five minutes. And... What do you think of Bert Munro? Oh, old Bert. <laughs> well, he's a bit of a dag, you know, but <laughs> he's a trier, isn't he? <laughs> well, you don't re meet very many characters in your life as you go along, but he would be one, the greatest, I would say, as far as we're concerned. Well, he's always glad to see you, that's one thing. You know, he never sort of, oh, I'm too busy, go on, go off, you know, it's a lot other people are. And... Oh, um, does get growly when you lift around. <laughs> well, I always figure uh, you're, a man's like a blade of grass. He grows up in the spring strong and healthy and green, and then he uh, reaches middle age and ripens, as it were. And then in the autumn, he's like a blade of grass. He just finishes, fades away, and he never comes back, just like a blade of grass. <laughs> Is that what you want, a philosophy? <laughs> and I think when you're dead, you're dead. I've always thought that since I grew up a bit. I'm his grandson and very proud of him. Probably die on a motorbike. Every time he goes to America, he said that day, so I probably won't come back, but doesn't worry. <laughs> just loves it that much. I think that's, that's the way he would like to go, I think. <laughs> oh, I think he's a good guy. He's a wee bit past it for his uh, age, but uh, he goes pretty good. Even even though of his age, for his uh, ability and mechanicing, he's terrific. Right, you successfully said nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Reckon if I can be like him <laughs> when I'm his age, I'll be quite content. I know, it goes pretty fast, that's all I know. <laughs> I reckon he's a great guy. I've known him for, well, since I was a, left school, I suppose, and uh, yes, he, he's a real colourful personality. He always has been. One of the boys enjoys a lot of fun, and he never seems to grow old. Bert Munro, oh, he's uh, you know, pretty good. He's just my kind of guy, you know. He's... Uh, what do you think of Bert Munro? <laughs> oh God, um, I think he's very. Um, He's clever. I also think he's a dirty old man. But he's nice with it, I will admit that. Um, not too bad. I just think he's clever. I've always been happy working on my bike. Even though it blows into hundreds of pieces, I just wade in again and start all over again. And uh, I'm happy doing that. And uh, uh, if you don't put in an effort at anything, well, you're, you might as well be a vegetable, mightn't you? Uh, it's effort and concentration that makes life worthwhile. And uh, nice ladies around is a big help. <laughs> As the guy said at the party, uh, if there's no women, uh, there's no party for me. And he went away home again. <laughs> oh, he's on the, when he's going overseas on the boat one time ahead, uh, a 19-year-old. <laughs> I'm not telling you that. I guess I am a fanatic or an enthusiast. I've been called a super enthusiast, uh, working on my bike so many years. But, um, you know, over the years. But, uh, well, if, if a thing's worth doing, it's worth finishing it if you can, isn't it? Lots of people ask me, when are you going to give up? I say, I'm never going to give up till I get a good run. I thought next day uh, I'd best go and see his, 
his mother, she was 84 at the time, so I knocked at the door and I said, just come in to give you a report in Bert. I says, he had a bit of an accident yesterday and, uh, oh, she says, did he? I says, yes. Uh, uh, she says, serious? And, oh, no. I said, not actually. I said, a few pounds of meat gone. And she says, uh, I suppose it was on that bloomin' motorcycle. Uh, yes, I says, it was. Oh, she says, that foolish boy. She says, when will he ever give up those motorcycles? <laughs> and she was 84 and Bert was 60. I've had eight concussions, one hemorrhage of the brain in crashes. Uh, not counting the one off the bed when I was 11 months old. I was knocked clean out there. Then the next one I had was off a horse I had rounding up cattle one Sunday morning and I was out all day. Then the next one was about 1921, standing on the seat of my bike waiting for Uncle Alf to get his King Dick going and catch up on me. And I was sort of doing a few acrobatics on the seat waiting for him, you know. And he said he saw me look round and I don't know what happened but I went right over and he said, the way I landed on my head, he is sure my neck would be broken. I remember one time I was in Tappers when he was salesman for uh, Tappers and all oh, Bert was a hired rider. Uh, every six weeks, new tires. And I was in there this one day and Alf Tappers says, what, new tires again, Monroe? Yes, Bert says. Uh, I'm doing a lot of miles for you, Alf, he says, and I'm doing them fast. <laughs> I went to Christchurch for 22 years and got the record, I think, three times, New Zealand record. And uh, in all those runs, I never had a perfect two-way run except three times. And three times, the timing failed, and that was the three times I made what I thought was a pretty good run. I said, never mind, Bert. Uh, Next year we'll have a cable under the road and we'll have no more trouble. Well, you know what happened next year? They couldn't get the road no more and that forced me to go to America. This is Radio Salt Lake City, Utah, USA. The next song is for the speed freaks out at the Bonneville Salt Flats. This week, the world's fastest machinery gets it together on the salt to attempt to better the land speed record. The oldest competitor is 73-year-old Bert Munro, and he's come 8,000 miles from New Zealand to run his 1920 Indian motorcycle, and Bert has owned the bike since it was new. Bert, we hope you join the 200-mile-an-hour club this year and better your existing world record. And if you're on the road heading for Bonnie, this next song's for you. Spring of 1920, I stayed a night at the Criterion Hotel in Vicargo. In the backyard, I saw the first Indian scout that come to these parts, and I just fell in love with that thing. And uh, so uh, it wasn't long before they come on the market, and I bought one of the first ones uh, for 140 pounds cash, acetylene light. And the electric models were 10 pound dear. Well, I just. Uh, I wasn't fussy about the electric light, so I bought the one with the uh, acetylene light, and that's it sitting on the trailer there right now. But uh, as the one writer in America said, the makers would never recognize this machine. <laughs> but uh, over the years, uh, I just rode it every day to work and every night to a dance. And one night, my mother said, Bert, she said, couldn't you stay home just one night with Mum and Dad? Look, Mum, I said, I'll stay home tonight. And for two years, until I got married, I stayed home every Tuesday night. It happened to be a Tuesday night. So I came about when I got arrested at Edwards Air Base. In 1959, yeah. I'd bought a straight eight Pontiac and uh, went down to Mexico for a couple of thousand miles. Uh, and on the way, I hunted up where Edwards Air Base, you know. And um, at the time, I didn't know nobody was allowed in there without special written authority from the Defense Department in Washington, D.C. I headed in, and I used to cruise fairly rapidly on that straight eight Ponty. So I got away in there, uh, I saw a sign up, Welcome to Edwards Air Base. So I whooped her up and kept going. There's a lot more writing, too, you know. But 